The men working on the Fukushima reactor travel from towns outside the exclusion zone. Our Asia correspondent John Sparks went to Iwaki City, where he spoke to workers who claim conditions are chaotic, training inadequate. Here's his special report. Rocked by the earth and battered by the sea, this the work of Japan's great earthquake and tsunami. The cleanup is well underway, and for many here, the gloom has begun to lift. But one part of this coastal strip will not submit so easily. This was a popular beach, a great place to go swimming, but few come here now. It just doesn't feel safe. The threat's not posed by the sea. 24 kilometers down the coast, a group of men and women are trying to stabilize the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. And it must be the most dangerous workplace in the world. When Fukushima's cooling systems failed, a series of explosions and reactor meltdowns tore the complex apart. This the worst nuclear crisis since Chernobyl. Thousands of workers have been drafted in to secure the plant, but they run extraordinary risks. Tell us what it's like. The conditions are chaotic. There are no rules. People who come here for the first time, well, they must be very troubled. I don't know how to describe it. It's just depressing. Channel 4 News visited some of the dormitory towns where many of Fukushima's 3,000 employees are now staying. They're forbidden from speaking to the media, but a number granted us interviews, describing a nightmarish world of high radiation and difficult terrain. We've hidden their identities. We don't know when things will collapse on us, and the holes and cracks in the ground are terrifying. If you fall through, you may break your bones, but if it's 20 meters deep, then you die. The day starts here, at a former football training complex, before workers are bussed into the plant. The majority don't work for TEPCO, the facility's owner, but for an estimated 600 subcontractors. And with so many companies on site, some say it's impossible to maintain strict safety standards. We tried to ask workers about this, but we were told to leave. They're taught how to wear body suits, gloves and masks to protect themselves from radiation. But employees told us their training was inadequate. I got 30 minutes of safety instruction. It's not enough. And people come here with no knowledge of the operation. Communication on site is difficult. With about 30 foreign experts in charge of key bits of equipment, there's no common language. And the protective masks make it that much tougher. Sometimes workers take them off to speak to each other. Few of us speak English or French, so the language barrier is higher than expected. We talk to them through translators, but we know we're being exposed to radiation while we do it. Dr. Masahiro Kami runs a clinic where plant workers and locals can get medical care. Most other doctors have evacuated. He says many employees hide the amount of radiation they're exposed to by ditching their personal monitors. The reason? If they exceed the limit, there's no more work. They try to work as long as they can, so when they go into dangerous areas, they leave their radiation meters behind. The real radiation count is much higher. That's a fact. We took Dr. Kami's concerns to TEPCO's headquarters. Do you accept that this practice is taking place? Whether it happens or not, I think it is necessary to confirm the matter first. However, I do not know anything about this at present. It wasn't easy to hear Mr. Hitasugi, who chose the location of our interview. It clashed with a large protest by farmers demanding compensation from TEPCO for crop contamination. Signs of progress? TEPCO's PR department thinks so. They posted this video last night. Yet the company is widely mistrusted for withholding information about leaks and accidents. And workers at Fukushima agree it's standard practice, they say. I'll give you an example. Contaminated water leaked from the decontamination system. The leak was acknowledged to the press, but the amount was wrong. Far more water was spilt. Our interviewee was referring to an incident on July 10th, when TEPCO said 50 litres of liquid had been leaked. So we asked Mr. Hitasugi about this apparent discrepancy.
I cannot remember what happened on July the 10th, therefore I don't know the exact details of that. Even if water leaked outside, it is our understanding it will cause no damage to the environment. There's plenty of work on this shattered coast, but the cleanup at the nuclear plant is different. It can't be sorted into piles. 3,000 workers are now risking their lives, some out of duty, others for the cash. But it's the men in charge who must prove their worth. John Sparks, Channel 4 News in Fukushima Prefecture.